All right, so here I've imported actually a session, a Pro Tools session to Sonar 6. Um, and this is basically a track by track thing. I've done sub mixes uh, for the guitars, and also there's only one, one track of vocals, so I uh, just have a stereo submix of that, and then we have um, a bass that we recorded as well. Um, and who's this band? Oh, this is The Hot Love. And this, this is, is your, uh, your uh, Guar and uh, <laughs> Guns N' Roses cover band? Yeah, the yeah. Guar and Guns N' Roses. That's exactly what we uh, thought of when we st first started forming the band. Sweet. But anyway. So you guys wear costumes? Um, we, uh, yes, we do. <laughs> um, what was the other band? Guns N' Roses. <laughs> Guns N' Roses. Yeah, we, we dress up half as Guar, half as Guns N' Roses. Sweet. Um, so here we have... Uh, kick drum was recorded with a um, a Beta 52, a Sure Beta 52. Um, snare, we had two mics on the top of the snare, uh, one SM57, and then uh, one of those Octava MK103s or MC103s, depending mm -hmm. on. Uh, we had the low tom that was an um, it was an it was a Sennheiser tom mic, one of those clip-on mics. Oh, clip Same with the high toms. Um, overhead, that was a uh, Shure KSM32. Okay. Then we had two room mics. Um, I believe those were both... Um, I believe one was an Earthworks. And then... Um, I can't remember exactly what the other was. I think it was like a, uh, uh, a U87 clone or something like that. Or U47 clone. So you, okay. you only used one overhead. One overhead. Yeah, this was, it was kind of weird. I, uh, I engineered this along with the drummer. And this was a setup he was using. We had a really nice room. Uh -huh not enough channels to do two overheads and two rooms and he really wanted to do two rooms but it actually worked out where w we had one room really far mm -hmm. on one side and one room mic on the other side and we panned those to get the stereo effect. so just to let people know that a, a more common setup from one overhead to two rooms would be maybe like one room versus with two overheads yeah that'd uh, be a more common but to save on channels and because we had such a nice uh, sound in the room we, we uh, decided to go with two over uh two room mics instead of two overhead mics gotcha right. i just thought that should be clarified mm -hmm. definitely <laughs> definitely definitely so um let's take a listen to what we have this is pretty much everything unmixed so it's going to sound kind of weird and then we'll go in we'll we'll solo our drums and we'll go through the method of how people normally start to mix in drums okay sweet all right <laughs> I'm gonna go forward to a uh, to a part where they have just the beat. I'm gonna go straight to this past the introduction. So we got a pretty good sound going sure. uh, to tape, but uh, let's get in there and actually start mixing the drums so we get more of a classic sound. So I'm gonna solo just the drums. And I'll also make it so we can just see the drums. Now be careful when you're soloing the drums to, to throw into the mix. Um, one thing that I find when I do that sort of stuff is that you can, it's really easy to uh, not wedge the drums properly in your mix. How do you mean? Well, like when you, when you solo something to get it prepared to like insert into your whole multi-track spectrum, um, you run the risk of uh, of not of masking other frequencies or um, competing with other things. We'll, we'll we'll get into that, man. Yeah. Well, actually, I have the analyst here. Ah. This is a, a plugin that comes with it, and I have this nice. just on the drum bus, All so right. we can actually see what we're doing with each instrument. Okay. So it'll be a nice visual aid. All right. So I've selected this portion of the song, and I'm going to loop it, and it'll just play now. And we'll just hear the kick drum. Got a little bit of snare bleed. So we may want to EQ that out, but not we won't do that just yet. So what we're seeing here is a lot of energy around right over here. We got our peak over here, and we also got some some lower frequency stuff. We may want to EQ that out as well. But yes, most of our energy is around 80 hertz, and we also seem to have something going on at 160. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring both of the snare snare mics down actually what what i think i'll do is i'll bring in this the 57 first and then basically what we were using the condenser for is to get more crack 
out of it. Okay. Sometimes the 57 doesn't have as much of attack because mm. it's a it's a dynamic microphone, and the um, the octava is a condenser. So I'll start bringing in our snare. One thing I like to check when I start doing this is checking phase. Right now we can we got a, a strong center image uh, and, and a good amount of low frequency in that, that mm -hmm. snare. See if I put it out of phase, what happens? All right, so not not exactly much is happening. So what that means is it's probably either halfway out of phase or there's not affecting uh, there's not enough snare in the kick and there's kick not enough affected. kick in the snare. Right. So that's a good thing. All right, so as you can hear, there's not a lot of high high frequencies in that snare, so I'm mm -hmm. going to start bringing in our condenser. You're muted. So hold on. We start to get some more life out of that snare. What I like to do, I don't know if you guys like to do this, I like to move the, the snare a little bit to the right. Sort of like viewer's perspective of the drummer. I'm more of a player. I'm, I'm, I'm more Your of a player's player's perspective. perspective. Yeah, sacrilege. That's 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 just taste right there. <laughs> well, we got the hip hop yeah, guy over hip -hop here. Guys, Never pans a snare. Right. <laughs> so, but I like to move it just a little bit, just to match. Like if you, if you have a like at all stereo uh, imaging in your overheads or your room mics, I like to match that a little bit. I actually have my headphones on backwards, so I'm gonna switch them. <laughs> All right, that's much better. So not far. I got it at about 20, 13% between there. We'll see what happens when we bring in the rest of our mics. Next thing, we got our, our toms. Is, it, is this the way you guys usually do it, or you guys uh, I do, start on a different I do, manner? I do it differently. I do it a lot. Uh, not a lot. Do you start? Do you start with your overheads and, and stuff like that? No, no. I always. I mean, I, I'm same with you. Is where I start with the kick, um, and the snare. But I kind of what I do is is after like I, I see where I would place in the whole mix first, and then I'll solo it out, kind of mm -hmm. get everything set up, and then I'll do my EQing in the mix with the mix. So that's just where. I yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I do the EQ later. Yeah, but uh, as far as like you know level setting within the whole drum thing. I do like snare and over, uh, not snare, I mean kick, then I do overheads to see where it kind of sounds without, because okay. like snare and toms, for me at least, mm -hmm. seem to be like when you mic them individually, you can, you run the risk of like overpowering them. So, you know, sometimes I want to set them lower than, than the normal, than normally, or maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, for, for me, once you bring in guitars and everything, you're going to have to have a lot more of that snare in there than the than mm -hmm. what's just in the overdub heads. Same with the toms. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a huge EQer. Yeah. So I, I usually um, rely on on levels and on using the level of the close mics to make uh, the drums punch through. No, no, I, and that's a real legitimate way. There's like this is one of those things where there's no real right way to do it. Mm -hmm. It's just a way to do it and how you figure it out. And every drummer is differently, which is a very important thing to yeah. point out because. You know, if you do the bon if you have some guy who plays like John Bonham, it's going to be like you don't really need mm -hmm. to use close mics. And th this drummer, he's a little, he's kind of a light touch, real yeah. good drummer, um, sort of a jazz guy. Mm -hmm. But okay, so next, instead of bringing in the toms, j just because he doesn't use the toms all that much, and when he does, it's more finesse thing. I'm going to start bringing in our overhead, and I'll bring back the analyst as well. Okay, so the overheads, I believe, are mostly for cymbals. There's different ways you can do this. Usually, I like to bring the overheads down a bit, just so they're getting cymbals. Don't, don't, don't have them as high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's our overhead. As you can hear, it's, very, it's a pretty live room. You're definitely, with, with, the, with the overhead, and, and when the room comes in, you're going to definitely get a big, wet sound, yeah. a lot bigger kit than... So you don't, don't, you need to balance, uh, when you have a room like that, you need to balance uh, how much of your overheads and your room mics you use. One important thing to do here at this point is start, check the phase of your overheads and your kick. It's very important. So it sounds, sounds pretty good. If we're looking at our analysts, we can still see that we're getting a good amount of energy down here when we're... Um, when we hear the kick drum, I'm just mm -hmm. put the analyst on real time so we can actually see the, the transients a little better. So we st we're still getting that, but if we put it out of phase, 
I think it sounds a little punchier. Yeah, you're you're definitely. See, the thing is, is uh, yeah, you're definitely getting better. It doesn't sound much. It doesn't have the basketball effect. Mm -hmm. I think I think definitely. So, sometimes, uh, a lot of times, your overheads are going to be out of phase with your kick drum, and that's something that you should always be aware of. It isn't always like that, but you want to be able to check it, and you can actually see it on here, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to go back uh, in phase, and we get. We lose a bit of the that, that low end punch. Right, right. And if I bring this in, now we can actually see it slightly over here too. There's a lot more power to the kick. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that definitely needs to be like that. Mm -hmm. One other thing that you can hear better on monitors is a lot of times um, we have the kick centered. We also have the overhead centered. When two things are out of phase, all of a sudden you lose that center image. It'll sound like you don't exactly know where it's coming from. Yeah. So that's another way to, to see if something's out of phase. The best way, of course, is an oscilloscope, mm -hmm. but that's a little more advanced where you map X against Y and you look at the Lissajou figures of the oscilloscope. But we don't have that, we don't have that here, so uh, we, we have to use our ears and a little help from, from a that frequency sucks. analyst. <laughs> <laughs> if you have an SSL, then you'll probably have a lot easier time. Do they have oscilloscopes on there? They, on the new ones, they have this weird like frequency spectrum analyst that operates in a 360 way, so it, it shows phase and frequency at the same time, like in a in an image that's based off of like a, a crossbar graph. So it, mm -hmm. it's really very interesting to cool, cool. use. Well, let's uh, start bringing those toms. We actually stopped on a section that uh, that did have some a good amount of toms on there. So I'm going to turn on our loop again, and so this is the section. Move our now marker there. All right. So I'll bring them in. Okay. All right, that's our low time. I'm bringing that in. I like I like the low time to be kind of loud. And here here we get to a portion where now I feel we need to start EQing. The low time, it's all right. There's just not an, a lot a lot of body to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in an EQ. And the way to add sort of that that body that that sustain to it a, a tom is to start adding around 100 hertz or so 160 just usually usually the low frequency knob if you're if you're looking at a three band eq but i'm going to bring in this parametric and let's see three hertz we have okay the third band is at 200 hertz so that's about the right place i'm just going to start bringing that in around 200 100 somewhere in there and we'll start to hear what happens if you add more than 200 well we'll, we'll check that out okay. so this is with the eq all right now i'm gonna bypass it yeah. uh, i'm just i'm gonna add a lot just to yeah, so yeah. it's more obvious that, that's what I'm doing with this essentially. Right. I don't want to do it this much. But that's a little bit overkill. About four and a half dB. It's a good amount. So if we do, like Britton was saying, if we do start adding higher frequencies, we add stick to it, and it sort of adds articulation. One thing that that I could also do is is cut a little bit. And what I'm going to do is cut a little bit at 1k. I hate 1k on drums. Tighten that up a little bit though. Tighten that cue up just a little. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is on the fourth band where I'm cutting around 1K, I'm going to raise the, the Q or, or lower the bandwidth. So it's a smaller amount that we're taking out. More, more exact because you do still want some stick articulation and you still want some of that, the overtones, of, or like the frequency harmonics of 100K um, mm -hmm. in that area. Um, or, or uh, 1K. Yeah, 1K. Sorry, you need so 1K. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a bunch of 4K. 4K, 5K. Now we start to hear a lot of that stick. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that slap against the head. And, and I'll, I'll bypass it. 
Yep. And I'll add it. So that's mu that's definitely a bit much. So I I really like to whenever I'm EQing, I kind of for myself set a five dB limit of boost. I I try not to add more than five dB. And it's I mean, because if you do that, you're just gonna add a whole bunch of noise and phase. Yeah, and phase, phase and problems. And you're gonna and you're gonna be forced to what you're gonna be forced to do is you're gonna kill your mix. You're gonna kill the dynamics in your mix because you're gonna be forced to to compress and limit a whole bunch. All right, so I got the low tom sounding how I wanted in the mix. Now we'll move on to the high tom. We'll spend a little less time on that. Here's a section where we got some more high tom. Right over here. And then loop it. And bring it in. All right. And notice how notice how I didn't solo just the drum to to EQ it. I'm EQing it within the mix. Mm -hmm. That's something I like I I prefer to do uh for 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 certain drums. For kick sometimes for kick or snare sometimes I'll EQ it separately. So Let's just put any cool or just let's first see how it sounds. Okay, that's got a lot of ring to it. Yeah, yeah it's really ringy. Maybe kind of gross. Maybe I take out some of those higher. Yeah. So we'll grab the same equalizer. So w w one one cool thing that we can do to actually find what the problem is is turn turn it up. Find the find the the parts we don't like. I'm gonna turn the cue up. We'll find that ringing. Here we go. So right there, around 719 hertz. Start and then subtract there. So wherever it starts to sound bad subtract what's what uh, what sounds bad so already we're getting a little better uh, once again I'm gonna add some more around the same area to get some more of that body and then up around 5k to get a little more stick so already we're sounding a little better it's not perfect I mean probably I would have wanted to re -e like just tune the drum better yeah the drum. sometimes you don't you don't have that luxury yeah and make sure that you're not crossing too many air frequencies for mm -hmm. those toms because they can n not in this case specifically in this case he, yeah he's yeah. playing it he's playing it separately yeah yeah but like sometimes you'll have one one thing i'll probably do is just take out some of the bass in yeah. here yeah there we go just lose a, lo use a low shelf mm -hmm. let the kick drum you know get in there somewhere around here and and the and that floor tom get in there too and mm -hmm. And there you go. I'm, I'm already boosting a bit higher yeah. than I was the floor time. I'm around 250 where I'm boosting. All right, so I'm going to bypass this EQ. We'll listen to. Here's the before, and here's the after. Before. After. So it's, it's, it's basically what we've done is we've taken a problematic drum, made it a little less problematic. All right, so right now I'm pretty happy with the sound of most of these drums. So let's just listen to all the drums together in, in one of the uh, the verses. Oh, I'm still looped. There we go. Don't display this message. There we go. All right. Okay. So this is an okay mix for like light stuff but we got some heavier guitars going so what I'm gonna do is start to use a few methods to really make the kick and the snare pop do you hear that uh, that low tom in there the low tom when it's not. yeah the low tom does resonate what's I, picking I, I didn't up? notice that I think it's it's a low tom can we gate that? yeah would you gate that you can hear that yeah yeah let's gate it okay and actually I probably wouldn't go so far as to gate it. I would go and um, I would probably just uh, do a, where is it? 
just to let, but there is a point where doing a good old gate right there will eliminate a lot of your problems Here if you go. want a really isolated mix. So, set our threshold. Now, what we want to do is make sure, because he's doing some rolls in certain spots, we want to make sure we're not dropping out any part of the roll. Yeah, like over here. And we may need to uh, change, we may need to make this a slower release as well. Mm. Yeah, see, so ugly. that yeah. it was. Let's listen to that again and see it. I'll, let's listen to it without the gate. Okay, see that sounds pretty natural. Yeah. And with the gate. No. So yeah, yeah. that release what is way. We need fast. is more. We need to turn up the release so that the gate will turn on slower. That should do. We're also going to, well, we will need to bring it up a little more. I'm going to lower the attack mm -hmm. to zero and then also lower the threshold a little bit, make it a little bit more of a gentler gate. And you can also change the depth. If we put it up here, basically what we're doing is expansion. So it's not actually gating. If we turn it down to like 14, it'll sound more like gating. And we can actually see it turning on and off here. You want to explain the difference between gating and expansion? Basically, gating, you set a threshold for whenever your sound goes below that threshold, um, it's basically muted. Mm -hmm. um, or actually, the level is, is brought down so much that it's effectively muted. Um, with expansion the amount that is brought down when it goes below the threshold is, is less than a gate. It's, it's still there. The sound is still there. It's just quieter than, than it would be. So basically, it's basic, uh, w when it goes below the threshold, it's like turning down the fader. And then when it goes above, you turn it back up. Mm -hmm. So it's basically automatically controlling a fader for you uh, for all intents and purposes. And another way to do this without a gate is you can mute. Um, you could do manual mutes, mutes. Or yeah. you can chop the event up. Chop yeah, it up. That's what chop I did before I knew that gates were yeah. existed. This actually, you, you can, there, all, the, all the DAWs have different things. You can do like an uh, extract silence. I know what the, yeah. that's what they use on, uh, that's what they call it on Sonar. They call it different things yeah. on different DAWs. But anyway, so we got that Tom muted. That was a good ear, Mike. Well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of rushing through it and. I will miss a few things. So this is this is our drums without the room. And what we're going to do is sort of kick up the, the kick and the snare. We haven't even brought up our, our room mics yet, just so you guys know. Oh, and one other thing, before we forget about the toms, I like to pan them pretty hard left and right because they're, they're being picked up by the overheads a bit, which will bring them farther center. But you get sort of that when, when a guy does a roll down, you get that effect. Sure. It's classic. Classically, sometimes people will, will pan them all the way left, all the way right. right. But uh, I don't like to do it that much because then that's sort of when you're listening on a pair of speakers kind of gives mm -hmm. you a weird phasey effect like they're further away than they should be. Right. They move too much. It's too much, mo it's too much movement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it makes for a busy, overly busy drum mix. <laughs> so anyway. I'm going to show you guys my little tricks for making the kick and the snare just really pop out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this track. This is the kick track. Clone? Yeah. Basically, it just clones all the properties. Okay. You, you can do it different ways. You can create another track and, and copy paste your, uh, your kick. You're duplicating the track. Yeah. I'm duplicating the track, exactly. But also grabbing the values you have set for yeah. volume. Mm -hmm. And you, if there were any effects, they'd be there. And that, that little checklist that came up that lets you control That's sweet. all that stuff. That is sweet. So I what I'm, Pro Tools did that. Yeah. So do I. One thing I'm going to do is um, gate the second track. So let's just actually unsolo everything except for the kicks. So... 
I'm going to stick the gate, the same gate that we stuck on the tom, I'm going to stick it on our kick drum and just kind of listen to what happens to it there. Let's do my settings. So as you can see, it's kind of dirty. That, that's what we're looking for here. And now what I'm going to do is put an EQ on that gated kick and just EQ the hell out of it. All right, so this is a 86. I'm going to turn the Q up with this a little bit. And I'm going to turn down um, around 100 hertz just because that's where the bass usually lives. That's where the fundamental of the bass guitar or, or actually sometimes the, the second harmonic. And I'm going to go kind of crazy with the EQ here. I'm going to add more than I usually add. Yeah, I'm going to subtract more than I usually add. But this is, this is all for a good reason. And I'm going to raise the high end. There is some symbol in there that I'd rather not have. So what I'm going to do is actually change this to a, a bell curve. Raise the Q. Use this one to bring up my high end. And find that symbol that I... I don't think it's going to be we're going to be able to take it completely out. So instead what I'll do is I'll add my magic 12k frequency to get the presence on the kick. That beater head. That's the beater head that we're adding there. Lower the cue just a little bit. Okay, so now I got a really punchy kick drum track. I'll take my regular kick drum track, you know, maybe turn it down just a little bit and start to bring in the other kick drum track until it starts to and actually I should probably just bring back everything and I'll start turning up the kick drum track and until I really start to hear the, the kick drum pop out there we go nice. I'm gonna add it up all the way just so we can all hear but right around right around there is where I like it give it that thump yeah and we can do the same thing for the snare. I'll do it a lot quicker though. Do clone track. Gate it. Man, I like that clone track feature. Yeah, it is cool. And again, this is just to add some pop so we can get a little crazy with our settings. For snare, I like 5K. I hate 1K again. And I like a little bit of around 200, 300, 400. What did 1K ever do to you? It's a radio frequency. It's a frequency that makes things sound like, like radio, yeah. like transistor radios. It's good for other stuff, though. It's just not drums. And, and like I said, I'm just going to go crazy with these settings. I don't want to go that crazy. Just so we're adding some real big punch to it. It doesn't necessarily have to sound good on its own. It's just about adding to the entire mix. So, again, same thing. I'm going to turn it down all the way. Play my mix. and just start bringing in the snare. As soon as you start hearing it pop like that, that's when you know. Another thing that I like to do on this gated one is just compress it. And I'll put that before the equalizer. Why, so are, you, why are you compressing it? Um, just to sort of smooth it out a bit because you want to say you want to squash the yeah you want to squash the dynamics in this case mm -hmm. yeah so that we get we get constant hits you don't always want to do this no but this is rock music so so i'm just going to compress this one okay so we're, we're hitting it pretty good and that's sounding pretty good for my taste 
it's really simple. Just just open it up and, and just start pressing it. Once again, since we're doing this on the clone track and we still have our natural track, it's it's a way to get it much more solid. And I do hear some ringing in the high tom. Now. Yeah, that's that's what I was hearing earlier. Let me gate this guy too. Yeah. So now we don't have. Does he do rolls on the high tom? No, no. He okay. just hits. So we don't need to worry about this one as much. So now you can see that's working. It might be a little loud. Anytime when when you, any of your toms are a little louder than your your snare, you know you have a little mixing issue there. So I'm pretty happy with this right now. Let's hear it with the rest of the track. Oh, and also just the rooms. All I'm going to do with these guys is just bring them down a little bit so that they're just adding a little bit of reverb basically yeah, yeah. And, and then you, pan them left and right if you don't have gotcha. a if you don't have a room tone you can always just add reverb, add to, reverb. The, to the whole thing and set it in its own room you, usually yeah usually what i'll do is just add reverb to the snare and maybe the toms and then gate that All yeah, right, yeah. so here we go this is the entire mix let's just take a listen to how it sounds go in the city of Okay, all, all I can say is we need a little more fit. Okay. A little more room. What's that? Needs a little more little room. A little more room. Yeah. I'm going to move it forward a little bit. He's claiming to feel the heat. Folks are running. Now, will you send that all to a sub mix so you can. This does have a sub mix on it. Okay. And that's what I have the analyst on. Gotcha. Um, but so you just raise and lower that. Yeah. So if I do need more drums. He's claiming this. to feel the heat. Folks are running. Gotcha. See, being a hip hop guy, I like the, uh, the loud drums. I would bring down the guitars a little bit. It's going down. Yeah. So there we go. Now, at that point you would go to the rest of your mix and start tweaking it with your drums and then you would further tweak your drums within the mix. That bass sounds great, by the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Does sound pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, shall we move on? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's excellent. Um, mm -hmm. If any of you guys have any tips uh, you want to share with us, any ideas, anything that we missed out that you want to add to it, uh, check out the GearWire forums, the Crosstalk forums there, and you can add on and, and we can continue that discussion elsewhere. Or any questions about... You know, mixing, about um, setting up vocals, for example, or EQing vocals, or whatever sure. you guys got, just please send it, because it's yeah. the better way we can... We would like to do more, more uh, you know, walkthroughs and how to do yeah, this absolutely. stuff, and anything we can do to make it a little easier for you to understand, or anything that you didn't catch, uh, you know, hit us up in the forums, and we can uh, have a conversation there. Sounds great.